This is the story of Final Fantasy XIV, Stormblood, patch 4.3, Under the Moonlight. Now where we left off, Yatsuyu still has no memory of her former self, but Asahi just gave her a special mirror. Also, we found that somehow Xenos is recovering in Garlemald. Let's get started. At the Ruby Bazaar, Alfino says he's received word from Lord Hien that the prisoner exchange is about to take place. Alize points out that Yatsuyu will remain a Doman citizen, since this was their agreement should her memory not return. They decide to head to the Doman Enclave to observe her one last time. At the Doman Enclave, Hien mentions that Gosetsu is not well and he recently collapsed. They head in to check on Gosetsu and Yatsuyu. Open wide now. Please, to you. I'm not so frail that I cannot feed myself. He's embarrassed to be caught in this weakened state and insists he'll be back fighting in no time. Returning to Hien, the heroes muse over the fact that they would have never predicted that Yatsuyu would become Gosetsu's caretaker. Hien says he may recover, but he will never be the warrior he once was. Yuguri says she's been spying on her for months and the mask has never slipped, so she's truly convinced now that Yatsuyu has lost her memories. Hien says she shall become a citizen of Doma then, and they will bring her to the prisoner exchange so Hasahi can witness her one last time. That evening, Hien is alarmed when he finds that Yatsuyu is missing, and the ferryman recalls seeing a woman matching her description. Immediately, the heroes go searching for her, as Hien is worried that villagers will recognize and attack her. After looking around for some time, they find her wandering into Namai village. Greetings. Might I have one of your... Wait! Please! I only wanted a persimmon! She's back from the dead to seek her revenge! I do. Hien steps in to intervene. He explains his shock when he learned of her survival, and he tells them her memories are gone. Lies! Lies! My lord, she would say anything to escape punishment! What does it matter? We have not forgotten her crimes, and we demand justice! I beg of you, Lord Hien, draw your blade and rid us of this canker! I'm sorry! I'm so, so sorry. You're sorry. I'm not. We're supposed to forgive you. A child feels sorry for her and gives her a persimmon. Can't you see how scared she is? How can you be scared of her? She's not the same. Until such time as her memories return, this woman shall be known as Tsuyu and treated as a citizen of Doma. He then assures them he will keep a close eye on her and she's to be kept safe unless her memories return. After the crowd disperses, Yuguri says that Gosetsu mentioned persimmons and she was probably just trying to find him one. They head to Castrum Fluminus to meet Asahi for the prisoner exchange. What a pleasure it is to see you once more, Lord Hien. Not to mention my dear sister. Hien presents Yatsuyu to Asahi, noting that her mind is unchanged and thus she is to remain in Doma. Asahi responds by calling out Yatsuyu's parents. Ah, Yatsuyu. You look... well. <laughs> is something wrong? Dear sister, these are our beloved parents. Does not the sight of them bring back sweet childhood memories? <gasps> Gossets, I have to take this to Gossets. Hien glares at Asahi, but he insists he will cooperate as planned. They agree to meet by the river to exchange prisoners, but Yatsuyu will remain with Doma. Yatsuyu is taken back to the enclave, then later the heroes go as well. When Tsuyu returned, her eyes were red from weeping. She spoke not a word, simply sat and peeled some fruit she'd brought for me. Hien explains that Asahi brought out her foster parents. 
It was a cruel trick to use her tormentors like that, knowing the pain it could cause. Moving on, Alfino says that he noticed several crates they brought out, then put back. Just then, the maidservant bursts in and says Yatsuyu is missing again. Help! Help! In this vision, the hero sees what happened just moments before. If only I hadn't remembered. Her parents approach. You couldn't even do us the simple courtesy of dying, could you? Oh no. You had to live and taint us with the shame of your failure. <laughs> You've kept your looks at least. I suspect you'd fetch a handsome price with the right buyer. Maybe enough to get us to Kugani and start a new business. <laughs> ah, my beloved parents. No sooner do I wake from gentle slumber than the world returns in all its cruelty. Yes, this is how it always was. How it was meant to be. Very well. If I cannot escape my nature, then I shall embrace it. In a rage, she kills them both. Yatsuyu! <laughs> what? Well done, dear sister. Did I not say you would come back to us? But surely you can't be satisfied with murdering a pair of doddering elders. You yearn for a deeper vengeance, and the power to see it through. <laughs> the hero explains what he saw to Hien, including the fact that she left with Asahi. Whatever he wants with her, he was willing to pay for it with his parents' lives. Later, Hien says he told Gosetsu the troubling news and that this means he's now obligated to give Yatsuyu back to Garlemald. Hien says, in case the prisoner exchange turns hostile, they need an escape plan for their people. Yuguri and Alfino agree to inspect Castrum Fluminus while Alase volunteers to ask the Confederacy for a vessel to borrow. Hien and the hero join Alase. They approach Rasho, and Hien explains their needs. Alice is angered when they ask what's in it for them, but Hien calmly says they'll be able to replenish their ranks with the returned prisoners that have no place to go. They agree to terms, provided that the heroes repair their vessel first. The heroes set to work repairing the ship. Rasho comes by to check on them, and they talk about one of the confederates who's hoping to see his father among the returned prisoners. Rasho says he'll allow him to return home if he chooses, even though the confederacy typically forbids this. With the ship repaired, the heroes return to the Enclave. Back at the Enclave, they find that Alfino and Yugiri have an escape route ready if needed. They head to the castrum to begin the prisoner exchange. Hien asks about the same crates Alfino pointed out earlier. Oh! The supply crates. They are filled with materials we hoped might be of use in Dorma's restoration. I meant to gift them to you at our last meeting, but we had so much else to discuss. How very generous. I confess I had not expected such compassion. Welcome though it is. Yatsuyu steps forward, fully returned to her evil former self, even claiming to still be the viceroy governing this region. Well, well. It would seem your shattered mind is mended. As per our agreement with the Ambassador, you are free to return with him to the Empire. Your authority as acting Viceroy, however, is no longer recognized here. But she laughs at him and insists she reigns, then pulls out the mirror Asahi gifted her. This is a summoning! A dormant citizen has called forth an icon in direct violation of our primary agreement. The negotiations have failed. Abandon the captives and make preparations to withdraw. 
The Garleans flee, the allies escort the prisoners, and the hero turns toward the primal. But I am become Skuyomi, goddess of the moon and divinity of night. What power can compare to such celestial majesty? At Castrum Fluminus, the hero faces the primal Tsukuyomi. After a challenging battle, he emerges the victor. Asahi taunts the hero and dares him to attack. You cannot, of course! To do so would burn the bridges we have labored so hard to build. Oh, but I'm forgetting, they're already ash. This Dorman woman has seen to that. The Empire cannot ally itself with any nation that refuses to renounce summoning. I believe I was most clear on that point. He goes on a rant, saying no one loves Xenos more than he does, and he would have done a better job than Yatsuyu. Useless! Piece of filth! Worthless whore! She awakens and kills him with her last breath. You should feel honored, dear brother. I saved the last of my strength, just for you. With her final words, she recalls Gosetsu. I wonder, was the fruit as sweet as he remember? In this vision, Xenos orders an adoring Asahi to meet with Doma and negotiate peace. Then he gives Asahi the mirror and tells him Yatsuyu will be used to summon an icon at the right moment. My lord, ever since the day you saw fit to save my miserable life, I have dreamed of repaying your benevolence. Upon my honor, I swear to devote myself wholly to your service. All that you command will be done, no matter the cost. He humbly asks Xenos about the fact that the Warrior of Light is known to slay icons. The icon is merely a message. The pacifist teachings of the popularis spread through this city like a plague. And I would remind the people of the threat we face. I will not fail you, my lord. The hero's friends return and Gosetsu is tortured by Atsuyu's death. Wherefore did the Kami spread? us only to inflict this pain <laughs> after a moment maxima returns to have a word the hero tells him that xenos gave the order to summon the icon alfino and hian say they were certain xenos is dead but maxima confirms he's alive but what then is the explanation that an imposter has infiltrated the innermost circle of the imperial corpse the idea is inconceivable, absurd, but worthy of investigation nonetheless. Anyways, Hian and Maxima agreed to continue with the prisoner exchange, and Hian warns Maxima that there may be treachery awaiting him in Garlemald. Boldly, Alfino asks to travel to Garlemald with him. He says they could use his expertise on Asians. The heroes are shocked, but he's got a good point, so they wish the best for him. The heroes head back to the Enclave and returned prisoners reunite with their families. How often have I imagined this moment? Thank you for helping it come to pass. An old man who cannot raise his blade has no place in the service of a young lord. Thus did I decide to devote my remaining days to pilgrimage. I will walk this land, offering prayers of repose for all the souls who left this life in suffering. Pray forgive me this last act of selfishness, and grant me your blessing. 
You have earned it. A thousand times over. Hien promises to take care of Doma and Gosetsu leaves. Inside, Hien expresses deep gratitude to the Scions for their help. He then says that, long ago, Gosetsu lost his wife and daughter in war, and Hien thinks he must have seen some of his daughter in Yatsuyu. A moment later, Alice and the hero head to Raugr's Reach to speak with Lys. Lys is shocked, both because Alfino went to Garlemald and because Zeno still lives. Lys says he had a hole in his neck and was buried. Thancred approaches, having overheard, and suggests they inspect Xenos' grave. Lys dislikes the idea, but says it's necessary. Oh dear. We seem to be missing a corpse. Well, it must be somewhere. I only hope it isn't walking around. Thancred thinks it could be that an Asian is using his body, but he says he'll snoop around and see what he can find. Alice and the hero return to the Rising Stones to brief the other Scions. Yshtola also believes the Asian theory. Meanwhile, at the Imperial Palace, Varus is angry with Xenos for having an icon summoned, but Xenos says it went according to plan and the icon was slain. Elsewhere, a mysterious katana-wielding Alamegan soldier slays another Alamegan soldier, then says his hunt continues. He steals an aircraft and leaves. Back at the Rising Stones, the hero sits with Yashtola and Alice. Yashtola is interested in relics being used for summoning, as was the case at Castrum Fluminus and the Pool of Tribute at the Ruby Sea. She plans to travel to Doma to study the Kami of the Far East. Thancred returns to the Rising Stones, and after poking around, still believes the Asian theory to be the most plausible. Meanwhile, aboard an Imperial aircraft, Maxima tells Alfino they are flying over the Burn, a wasteland devoid of ether. They crash land in the burn and head outside to face their attackers. Once the fighting is over, Alfino approaches the mysterious ally who says he has a history with the Scions, which surprises Alfino. Even more surprising, he tosses an Asian mask on the ground, saying he goes by Shadowhunter and the Asians are his prey. Maxima points out that the attackers were the Emperor's personal guard. Not wanting to journey to Garlemald right now, they decide to join Shadowhunter's party. Back at the Rising Stones, Alice is worried sick about her brother. Thancred offers to sneak into Garlemald to learn what he can. Alice is angry when she tries to go with him, but he insists that he go alone for stealth. And patch 4.3 ends there. If you want to see what happens next, check out the story video for patch 4.4. See you next time.